The Way of the Cross will be found on page 56 in your hymnal. Jesus, since our Page 168, The Way of the Cross. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. May the Lord Jesus, who suffered for us and by his paschal mystery redeemed us, be with you all. And your spirit. Lord and Father all holy. Do I have the wrong book? I grabbed them. <clears throat> Lord and Father of all, you willed that your Son's cross should become the source of all blessings, the cause of all graces. Grant that we who on earth hold fast to the mysteries of the sacred passion may in heaven enter into the joys of his resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The first station, Jesus is sentenced to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Then the whole assembly of them arose and brought Jesus before Pilate. They brought charges against him, saying, We found this man misleading our people. He opposes the payment of taxes to Caesar and maintains that he is the Messiah, a king. With loud shouts, however, they persisted in calling for his crucifixion, and their voices prevailed. The verdict of Pilate was that their demand should be granted. This crowd, the mob of evildoers, they sharpened their tongues like swords, ready their bows for arrows of poison words. The second station, Jesus accepts the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. The soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand and kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. Like a lamb led to the slaughter, or a sheep before the shears, he was silent and opened not his mouth. The third station, Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. It was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured. While we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted, but he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes we were healed. In this tent we groan, longing to be further clothed with our heavenly habitation.
the fourth station, Jesus meets his mother Mary. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad because of her, all you who love her. As nurslings, you shall be carried in her arms and fondled in her lap. As a mother comforts her son, so will I comfort you. Amen, amen. Say to you, you will weep and mourn. While the world rejoices, you will grieve, but your grief will become joy. She who knew her heart in sorrow would be pierced here bravely follows in her son's distress and pain. The fifth station, Simon helps Jesus carry the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. As they led Jesus away, they took hold of a certain Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country. And after laying the cross on him, they made him carry it behind Jesus. Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. A faithful friend is a sturdy shelter. He who finds one finds a treasure. A faithful friend is beyond price. No sum can balance his worth. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you, so you also should love one another. Boldly facing disapproval, she in cleansing sought removal of the stains of agony. The seventh station, Jesus falls again under the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. The watchmen came upon me as they made their rounds of the city. They struck me and wounded me and took my mantle from me, the guardian of the walls. I adjure you, daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my lover, what shall you tell him that I am faint with love? He humbled himself, becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. station, Jesus speaks to the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women who mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves and for your children. Ruth said, do not ask me to abandon or forsake you, for wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Israel's own daughters weeping came to Jesus, comfort seeking.
the ninth station, Jesus falls a third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. I folded up my life like a weaver who severs the last thread. Like a swallow, I utter shrill cries. I moan like a dove. Jesus, we The tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. They brought Jesus to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. Naked I came forth from my mother's womb, and naked shall I go back again. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Naked star in desolation, Jesus knows you, The 11th station, Jesus is crucified. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. When they came to the place called the skull, they crucified Jesus and the criminals on his right, the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up so that everyone may, who believes in him may have eternal life. Hands which heal and bless and feed us, feet which to the kingdom lead us, now are pierced with brutal steel. The twelfth station Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three o'clock in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Elo, Elo, Lema Samatani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. I have told you this so that you might have peace in me. In the world you will have trouble, but take courage. I have conquered the world. The 13th station, Jesus' mother and friends lower his body from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Cross, you have redeemed the world. There was a virtuous and righteous man named Joseph, who, though he was a member of the consul, had not consented to their plan of action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea and was awaiting the kingdom of God. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. After he had taken the body down, he wrapped it in a linen cloth. Come, all you who pass by the way, look and see whether there is any suffering like my suffering. The 
14th station, Jesus' mother and friends lay his body in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. You have redeemed the world. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in clean linen and laid it in his new tomb he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. My soul will be at rest in God alone, from whom comes my hope. Jesus rises in glory, victorious over death. As the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb, and behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, approached and rolled back the stone and sat upon it. Then the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus the crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, just as he said. Let us pray in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from my friends, we have given witness to the life-giving passion of the Lord. Let us go in peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.
Good morning. Please join in the opening hymn number 463 in your word and song book, number 463. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Good morning. Good morning Certainly welcome to all as we begin Lent now, or actually begin on Wednesday, but today celebrate the first Sunday of Lent. We welcome with us the RCIA, Catechumen and Candidate and Sponsor and Team, as um, we celebrate today the rite of sending. This afternoon they'll meet with the Bishop or Monsignor for the right, right of election, beginning their final preparation for the Easter sacraments. So all of us um, enter into this time of Lent in which today as we hear about temptations, about Adam and Eve, and even Jesus led into the desert where he is tempted, so we know that we face temptations in our life. We seek God's grace and inspiration to help us resist and embrace the ways of God. So to prepare for the sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sin, and we ask God for forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God formed man out of the clay of the ground and blew into his nostrils the breath of life. And so man became a living being. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden, in the east, and placed there the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground, the Lord God made various trees grow that were delightful to look at and good for food. With the tree of life in the middle of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, the serpent was the most cunning of all the animals that the Lord God had made. The serpent asked the woman, did God really tell you not to eat from any of the trees in the garden? The woman answered the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. It is only about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden that God said, you shall not eat it or even touch it lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you certainly will not die. No, God knows well that the moment you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God's who know what is good and what is evil. The woman saw that the tree was good for food, pleasing to the eyes and desirable for gaining wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. The word of the Lord. you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast 
Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Give me back the joy of your salvation, and a willing spirit sustain in me. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man, sin entered the world, and through sin, death. And thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sinned. For if by the transgression of the one, death came to reign through that one, how much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of justification come to reign in life through the one Jesus Christ? In conclusion, just as through one transgression, condemnation came upon all, so through one righteous act, acquittal and life came to all. For just as through the disobedience of the one man the many were made sinners, so through the obedience of the one, the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was hungry. The tempter approached and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become loaves of bread. He said in reply, it is written, one does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and made him stand on the parapet of the temple. And he said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, Again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Then the devil took him up to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their magnificence. And he said to him, 
All these I shall give to you if you will prostrate yourself and worship me. At this, Jesus said to him, Get away, Satan. It is written, The Lord your God shall you worship, and him alone shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we hear accounts of temptation. We hear the story of the fall of Adam and Eve, of their temptation in the garden, and we hear about Jesus being tempted in the desert by the devil. These are well-timed readings for us as we begin the season of Lent. They, they uh, invite us to first think about the temptations that we face and the effects, effects of sin on us. And secondly, they invite us to again be reminded of how much we need Christ to inspire us and to help us choose those paths that, that truly lead us to the fullness of life and the hope and the joy that God wants and desires for each one of us. About three or four weeks ago, at the weekday masses, we began the, the, the cycle of readings for this year. I mean, started with the book of Genesis. So from the very beginning, you know, and we're familiar with that story, how in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and separated, and made the day and night and light and darkness and the clouds and the sun and, you know, then eventually the, the waters and the land and, and, and all of that, you know, and then leading up to the creation of, of man and woman, of Adam and Eve. And the thing that's striking in, you know, that initial account is the perfect harmony and order that exists among all, all of the creatures, Adam and Eve, and even in their relationship and their harmony with God. But then, then we come to chapter 3, which is what we heard of part of today. You know, and I found myself um, a couple weeks ago in, in my homily or reflection on, on that reading, and once again as I read it for today, it, it came up again. It's like as, as, you, as, as I read that, you know, I, I found myself kind of reading it slower and thinking maybe, maybe if I go slower, maybe this time Eve will somehow make a different decision. You know, it'll, it'll come out different. But we know, of course, it doesn't. You know, then I found myself wanting to, to yell out, to shout, shout and say, Eve, stop. Don't do it. You know, don't eat that forbidden fruit. You know, but, but once again, we know, of course, that she does. And, and maybe that's like us. You know, if there's a family member or someone we know or care about, and we see them kind of heading in a bad direction, we want to yell out, stop, change, you know, save yourself. And, and, and a whole lot of people, a lot of stress and, and trials and sufferings. But so we know of the fall. And, and in this account and in the gospel, we hear a, a few of the main teachings of the church when it comes to temptation and sin. We hear, first of all, that um, sin... The, the temptation is something that, that's tempting and uh, alluring. You know, the evil doesn't uh, come appearing as a, as a devil, you know, with, with, with horns and a, you know, fiery pitchfork, but it comes as something um, enticing and attractive. You know, and so we hear the devil point out, oh, look at this tree. You know, the fruit's pleasing and maybe granting wisdom, and so it's something, you know, that, that, that Eve is drawn to. If it was some rotten, smelly fruit, she would have easily avoided it. Right? But so, so we recognize somehow that sin is, is a tempting and, and that somehow it seems to present, present some worldly or earthly ad, advantage. So we see that. The second thing that comes out very clearly in the reading is, um, is just the reality that Eve knows it. So we also, that's been the teaching of the church from, you know, from the early times about how sin, that it's something that's wrong and we know it. You know, so it's like when the Eve in, its, in, in the, the, the serpent in its cunning nature begins to say, well, did God really tell you that? You know, and Eve like to say, oh, yeah. You know, God pointed out you may eat of any of the tr trees, you know, anything of the garden, but not of this tree. So it's like she knows it. You know, so it's like it's very clear that, you, you know, it's like, but, but so, so once again, through the cunning and kind of alluring and temptation of the devil, she's led to think, well, God's lying. God's hiding something to her from, from them. And so, you know, she's led to go and eat the forbidden fruit. And then from that, we um, know the consequences. 
So also, I think that that spoke, speaks so clearly to us, you know, of, of just the, the idea that at times, you know, we've from little on perhaps um, been invited to, to memorize or know the commandments. You know, we know the, at times the teachings of the church or of Christ and, and what we should do, but then through temptation we think, oh, maybe that doesn't fit for me. You know, maybe God's not telling the truth and that maybe God's trying to trick me, you know, and so, so I'll go and, and, and do it my own way. But so, so we know, once again, that temptation and, and fall, and, and then so as the reading goes on, we see the consequences of sin. Instantly, Adam and Eve know that they had done something wrong. They felt shame and embarrassment. They felt exposed and wanted to hide. The light and grace that God had blessed them with from the beginning, they had thrown away. Now darkness, guilt, and regret has filled their hearts. Human pride and rebellion against God's plan has a long history. On our own, um, on our own humanity continues to drift away from a relationship with God and from the happiness that God wants for us. As we turn to the gospel today, we see Jesus, before he begins his public ministry, that he's led into the desert. Now, on several occasions, we'll hear that in the Gospels, you know, and often it comes before some significant encounter or, or teaching of Jesus that he goes away by himself, kind of to a deserted place and spend time in prayer. So it makes sense that as he's getting ready to begin his public ministry, that he would somehow spend this time kind of alone. You know, it's like he needs this time to kind of be with his own thoughts you know, to be inspired by God and somehow to know who he really is and, and what, he's called, what his mission is, what he's called to do. So we, so, so we hear in that very clearly that, that from that, that Jesus is able to know the temptations of the devil and resist them when they're presented to him. So, so Jesus is the one who proclaims that fidelity to God and the resistance in, 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 in all of those temptations that are presented before him. But so, 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 so once again, I thought, you know, doesn't all of this continue to speak to us? We, of course, face many temptations, and it can be so hard to avoid them and not to fall into sin. There are things that the world or the devil puts in front of us that seems attractive and to have many worldly advantages. And, and an insight that came to me in light of today's readings is that if we hope to resist temptation and evil, we need God. You know, on our own, it's like it's too, there are too many. It's, too, it's just constantly in, in the world all around us. And if we have any hope of, of resisting that, the, the lure and temptation of, of the devil and of evil, that we need God. And that's precisely what Len is about. It's a time for us to, to be able to um, not, not spend the 40 years in the desert, but for 40 days that we go and, and, and approach the magnificence of, 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 of God. So we see once again in Jesus, as our focus, as our attention is drawn to him, that a, after he had spent this time in, in the desert, so once again the, the, the devil um, attempts him with things that would be may, maybe pretty hard to resist. You know, he's been in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights, and the desert isn't filled with lots of food and, you know, lush plants and all of that. So we can imagine Jesus was hungry. So what's the first thing the devil tempts him to do? Take care of that. You know, turn these, these rocks into bread to take care of that physical hunger. But Jesus, once again, knows that there's something mar far more important than just taking care of a physical hunger. So he's able to respond that it's not on bread alone that that one lives, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Or I thought of a, a, another example that just shows that, that focus, that, that, that ability of Jesus to resist temptation. So once again, trying to put ourselves in his shoes for a moment. You know, we think about Jesus, so he's been in the desert for 40, 40 years, uh, 40 days and 40 nights. And that he, um, so from that, he, you know, he's probably not, uh, probably isn't real comfortable sleeping out there. You know, he's not been ha having a lot of food and water and that kind of stuff. So he's probably feeling sort of miserable, maybe like we feel once in a while. And then as the, de de as the devil comes and tempts him by saying, if you are the son of God, kind of in that kind of state, 
you know, maybe a more human tendency would be to lash out at him to something like, you know, how dare you question me about being the son of God? And we can imagine Jesus with his power, maybe having some lightning bolt of striking the devil out of existence, you know? But that's not what Jesus does at all, is it? He simply responds by quoting scripture and maybe um, trying to help the devil come to that greater understanding the reality of what Jesus knows, that there's true blessedness with God and in God's kingdom. So once again, if we are going to have any chance of resisting the barrage of temptation and evil that is constantly thrown at us, we need to remain close to Jesus and to the church. And so the church offers us these disciplines of Lent, of prayer, of fasting, of giving alms, of reaching out to those in need, and of um, repentance and, and, and penance in order to help unite us more with Christ. There, there's another example I'd like to share. It just spoke powerfully to me. I um, read it as a possible connection with the readings today, and, and then I saw a short video. Um, you know, Dynamic Catholic, they do the best Lent ever. And so the, um, the, 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 the video for, for yesterday was by Matthew Kelly. And so this um, example comes from the, it's, it's, it's titled The Alluring Music of the Sirens. And so, you, so I don't know if you're familiar with that at all. But so the sirens, that comes from Greek mythology. And, and, and this example, it presents um, two ways of trying to resist this kind of alluring temptation. So the the story is that the sirens, they were creatures of of heads of beautiful women and bodies of attractive birds. And they lived on an island. And with their irresistible charm, they had in their song, they lured mariners to come. You know, they were attracted to approach the island on which these um, birds, these sirens lived. But as they would get close, the island was, was surrounded by hidden rocks. So as they would approach, their, their ships would be, you know, dashed apart on, on, the, on the rocks and they would be destroyed. You know, and so it was, so for many had met their certain destruction and death by this allure of the sirens. So, so there was this, uh, two examples of, of ones who, who decided ways that they could resist. One was, was that of Odysseus. Odysseus is the hero of Homer's Odyssey, a great writing that from the, maybe the 800s. But so, so um, Odysseus, decided or figured out a way to resist this allure and temptation of the sirens, he demanded that his um, comrades, on, on the, his sailors, um, tie him to the mast in the ship so that he would have no chance of getting, getting free. And, and then he also had them all stuff wax in their ears so that they wouldn't be able to hear the beautiful song and music of these siren birds and be able to continue on their way and not be attracted to destruction and death. So that was one approach. The other was that of, of a King Tharsis. His way of resisting and conquering the siren's temptations was that he took a great Greek singer and songwriter, Orpheus, along with him. So Orpheus took out his lyre and sang a song so clear and ringing that it drowned out the song of the sirens. So once again, he wasn't tempted and allured to this island and you know, certain de- um, death and destruction. So in today's gospel, Jesus remains completely faithful to God. He trusts that God would never deceive him and truly wants all to know the blessings of forgiveness and the eternal joys that God desires for all of us. So during these days of Lent, may we be aware of those temptations. I don't know that we need to go around and stuff wax in our ears or hire some famous songwriter or singer, but certainly we do need to be attentive to those things that help us turn away from and resist that allure and temptation of sin and evil so that we can be more united with Christ, truly the source of life and inspiration and blessing for all of us. I invite um, you to remain seated, and we'll call up the RCIA Catechumen and Candidate, celebrate here today the rite of sending 
for them um, to go on to, to um, the right of election this afternoon. Reverend Father, this catechumen is beginning her final period of preparation and purification leading to her initiation. She has found strength in God's grace and support in our community's prayers and example. Now, Miranda asks that she be recognized for the progress she has made in her spiritual formation and that she receives assurance of our blessings and prayers as she goes forth to the rite of election. Celebrated this Sunday afternoon at Ro Holy Rosary Cathedral by Monsignor William Kubaki. Those who are to be sent to the celebration of election in Christ come forward together with those who will be your godparent. So when your name is um, read, if you'll stand and say present and come forward. Miranda Jordan Cassidy. My dear catechumen, this community gladly recommends you to Monsignor, who in the name of Christ will call you to the Easter sacraments. May God bring to completion the good work he has begun in you. And, and this catechumen has been preparing for the sacraments of initiation. She hopes that she will be found ready to participate in the rite of election and be chosen in Christ for the Easter sacraments. It is the responsibility of this community to inquire about her readiness before she is presented to Monsignor. So I turn to you, her godparent, for your testimony about this catechumen, Miranda Cassidy. And so if you'll respond to each of these questions, has she taken her formation in the gospel and in the Catholic way of life seriously? Has she given evidence of her conversion by the example of her life? Yes. Do you judge Miranda to be ready to be presented to Monsignor for the right of election? I do. And now I ask you, the members of this community, are you ready to support the testimony about this catechumen and include her in your prayers and affections as we move toward Easter? If so, please say we are. We are. My dear catechumen, this community gladly recommends you to Monsignor, who in the name of Christ will call you to the Easter sacraments. May God bring to completion the good work he has begun in you. And now I invite you to offer your name um, as enrollment in, in the book of, of, of elect. Reverend Father, I now present to you this candidate who is beginning her final preparation for the sacraments of confirmation and Eucharist and the reception into full communion of the Catholic Church. She has found strength in God's grace and support in our community's prayers and example. Now she asks that she be recognized for the progress she has made in her spiritual formation and that she receive the assurance of our blessings and prayers as she goes forth for the recognition by Monsignor William Kubaki this afternoon. Those who are to be recognized come forward together with your sponsor. Shelby Jo Kimmel.
My dear friends, this candidate, already one with us by reason of a baptism in Christ, has asked to be able to participate fully in the sacramental life of the church. Those who know her have judged her to be sincere in her desire. During the period of her catechetical formation, she has listened to the word of Christ and endeavored to follow his commands more perfectly. She has shared the company of her Christian brothers and sisters in this community and joined with them in prayer. And so I announce to all of you here that our community supports this candidate in her desire. Therefore, I ask her sponsor to state his opinion once again so that all may hear. So sponsor, as God is your witness, do you consider this candidate, Shelby, ready to receive the sacraments of confirmation and Eucharist and be received into full communion with the Catholic Church? I do. Now I ask you, the members of this community, are you ready to support the testimony expressed about this candidate and include her in your prayers and affection as we move toward Easter? If so, say we are. We are. Now, my dear friend, I address you. Your own sponsor in this entire community has spoken in, in your favor. The church, in the name of Christ, accepts their testimony and sends you to Monsignor Kabaki, who will in, in, exhort you to live in deeper conformity to the life of Christ. Now offer your name in, as enrollment in the book of, of elect. So they have been meeting for several months um, in session, learning about the scriptures and especially about our church. And so um, now always uh, the beginning of Lent is the kind of final step of their you know, commitment and preparation journey with us during Lent to the Easter sacraments. So certainly we show our, um, our thanks even for them, for their interest and desire and their efforts and our support for them. So, so, so please congratulate them for this amount of their journey. And they will be with us for a little bit later in Lent for Sundays of the Scrutinies where we celebrate those and then the Easter Vigil here on uh, Easter Saturday night. So you'll have to come back and watch that. Um, um, uh, Miranda has not been baptized so she'll be baptized and receive full initiation. Um, and, and Shelby has already been baptized in another church, but so she'll join us in full communion. So, so again, we we'll have our prayers and support for you. So, so now please all, all stand as we continue on with our prayers of intercession. So now you can just kind of turn this way a little bit. My brothers and sisters, we look forward to celebrating at Easter the life-giving mystery of our Lord's suffering, death, and resurrection, this catechumenan candidate will look to us for an example of Christian renewal. Let us pray to the Lord for them and for ourselves that we may be renewed by one another's efforts and, to get, and together come to share the joys of Easter. For our Holy Father and for all bishops, priests, and religious, May God grant them wisdom to guide all people through the enticements of this world and to embrace the ways of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our president and world leaders, may they resist the temptation of power for their own benefit and seek always to remain committed to serve their people and promote the life and goodness of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those preparing for the Easter sacraments through the RCIA process, that they may find guidance, comfort, and truth in the word of God and in our church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who struggle with temptations and have fallen many times to the snares of the devil, may they find assurance in God's never-ending love and forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God may help us remain steadfast to our Lenten sacrifices through acts of prayer, 
fasting, and reaching out to others, may we be more united with Christ and grow in holiness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all children and families, may they be united in sincere love for each other and help each other progress in the desire to one day get to heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who face trials and sufferings, may they know Jesus always walks with them and know the comfort and healing offered to us in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Marilyn Herman, may the faithful departed know the joy of eternal life with God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers written in the Parish Book of Intentions and our personal prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And on this day, we once again offer our special prayers for this uh, catechumen and candidate. May they be freed from selfishness and learn to put others first. We pray for their godparent and sponsor. May they be living examples of the gospel. And we pray for their teachers. May they always convey to them the beauty of God's word. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. My dear uh, catechumen and candidate, please bow your head as I offer this prayer of blessing. God of love and power, it is your will to establish everything in Christ and to draw us into his all-embracing love. Guide this catechumen and candidate in the days and weeks ahead. Strengthen them in their vocation. Build them into the kingdom of your Son and seal them with the spirit of your promise. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you all now to be seated, be sure of our prayers and, and affections for you as we move toward the celebration of Easter. Please join in the offertory hymn number 456, Tree of Life, number 456.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Give us the right disposition, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining 40 long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance. And by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy 
to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
please join in our communion hymn number 548. Eat this bread, number 548. <laughs>
Let us pray. Renew now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened. We pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A couple announcements. So, so once again, a reminder about the video series, Forgiven, that will begin um, this Wednesday here during the normal CCD time. So it's at 7 o'clock in the church basement. All the high school students who come for CCD, they'll, they'll be there, they'll gather there. And, and really, any parent, adult, anybody's welcome. So it's just a beautiful series that talks about just the, our need for forgiveness and mercy and what a gift that, that is in our life here and even the eternal consequences of that. So that will begin 7 o'clock um, here on, on Wednesday evening. You'll see the note in the bulletin. It's every other week. So for three week, or for three sessions, but every other week. So that's here at St. Michael in Hicksville also beginning on Wednesday during their CCD time, which is at 6, they'll do, a, it's a five-week series on um, a biblical walk through the Passion, um, uh, so a video and some 
discussion and all of that with that. Both of them really profound ways to help us on our Lenten journey. So you have, have all of that. Remember once again about the pamphlets at the doors of the church, which is some reflection on Lent and the prayer and sacrificing and giving alms. And there's the little card, I think there are some of those left, the little card with a nail in it, and a prayer reminding us of Christ, helping us to unite more with his passion and suffering. Also a reminder that um, this coming um, Saturday, so next Saturday, the Saturday Mass being in, in the month of March, will be at St. Michael in Hicksville. And then a couple other, other things. So um, for the school, you know, that, that we're approaching their reverse raffle, that's um, April 15th, so that's a um, month and a half or so away. But tickets are available for that. They're 60 bucks a piece. Um, and again, all it's just a great time of celebration and support of St. Mary's School. Um, Jake um, Bunnell, Jake and Stephanie have tickets available. So if you're interested, you can see them after Mass or contact the school or um, many people can get those to you. And then also, I would invite you to um, offer a special prayer today as part of our confirmation things of service and, and, and works of mercy. They're going to be um, doing their soup ministry. So um, they will go out to a number of people in the area and bring them a cup of soup and spend some time in prayer and conversation with them. So keep them in prayer as they do this um, work of mercy. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Holy Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the divine power thrust into hell, Satan and all the other evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join in our closing hymn, number 676, Strength for the Journey, number 676. Six.